Hi everyone, uh, today I'll show you how to uh, quickly operate uh, and get some results uh, with uh, the Leica BLK360 uh, laser scanner. So, I'm gonna show you how to mount it and uh, how to collect data in the field and after I will show you how to um, post-process the data uh, so you get to a final result which is a, a 3D model of whatever you want to, uh, whatever you want to measure. First of all, uh, this is this is the Leica BLK360. Uh, it's very small, so it's in this protective uh, box. And this is the tripod you will need to use. So, first of all, I'm gonna mount the tripod. I'm going to enlarge it to the maximum. And then I'm going to place it not too far from here so we can start the acquisition of 3D data. Okay, so this is the setup. I'm going to go ahead. Put it there. And with the Leica BLK360, I take it out of the uh, box. Make sure that there is always a battery inside. You can connect to the Leica with uh, an iPad or another kind of tablet, Android tablet, and inside the battery uh, pack here there is the password for the Wi-Fi. Here there is a, a on button. I can press on right now. It's gonna flash yellow for a few seconds and then it's gonna flash green and this is when you know it's uh, uh, started. Good, so I'm gonna go place this on the tripod. There is a very nice uh, uh, screw here. You just have to place it on top of the tripod. Great, our device is ready to start. It's down there. It's gonna scan 360 degrees, leaving just a small all ups, up or down. And we're gonna use an iPad to connect to it. So now I'm gonna switch to my iPad and show you how to set up everything in the field. And afterwards we just uh, uh, show uh, how to process the data in uh, the, on the laptop. So we are on the iPad right now. I'm located close to the instrument. So now uh, I'll show you how to start a survey. So first thing we need to make sure is that our Wi-Fi is on and uh, you will see this Wi-Fi BLK360 pop up. So you connect to it. If it's the first time you connect it will ask you a password and the password is located inside the battery compartment. Um, if not, you are done here. Uh, there is no internet connection, but we know that because uh, it's only a data connection to the BLK. And we go into Cyclone Register. So I'm going to show you another time. This is the Cyclone Register app. What I can do is um, start a new job. And just to remember where the uh, ground station is, I'll take a picture and use this picture as a reference. You can also write down here a title, tutorial, and this is gonna be our, our job. So basically you created here in this job a folder. You enter this folder and you have this, um, uh, this screen. Now there's nothing in here because we need to start uh, our survey. You see that here it's everything is completely completely empty so what i'm gonna do is press here and uh, have a look at the survey so i'm gonna call this scan one and you see that here down here you have uh, you have a big play button uh, but you also have uh, several uh, uh, options. So, so this one, the first one is the quality of the cloud point. I'm going to keep it at high. 
The second one is if you want pictures together with your cloud point, then I would say yes. Uh, the HDR is the high dynamic range. Uh, it's about uh, different um, illumination on the scene. If you have different illumination on the scene and uh, depending on if you want it or not, uh, there's, uh, um, there's a flash uh, option. In daylight, like, like we are now, I'm gonna keep HDR on. And down here you have also some um, uh, selection for the infrared. I'm gonna leave this uh, as uh, uh, as as uh, uh, it was in the um, in the original um, in the original file in the original setup. So uh, now what I have to do is make sure I'm not in the middle of the the recording of the scanner. So I'm gonna go uh, let's say a little bit behind the vegetation, or I put myself out out of the scene, and I'm gonna press start here. You see that uh, uh, the scanner starts uh, now. The scanner starts to rotate around uh, and it's starting to take uh, pictures. I'm probably going to be inside the pictures, but uh, eventually you can also put yourself out of the pictures. And you see that this bar starts starts to go. When this is finished, I'm going to show you what we have in the. So the first uh, scan is done and this is what uh, you can see on, on the app appearing. So if I tap on it and then I tap on scan one, so I, I select it, I can see first of all the 360 degree picture of, uh, of uh, my, my scene. You see that this is the camera where I was, uh, where I was taking uh, the first video and this is me actually, actually staying there. Uh, in order not to be too much in the scene. I can also have a look at the 3D, maybe decreasing a little bit the, the points, the point size. It's not as easy as, as one would wish to scroll and zoom in on an iPad, but you see that again, you know, there's my, there's my uh, figure, there's a nice scarecrow here, dressed in red, etc, etc. Good. So that was the first uh, setup down there uh, and I showed you on the iPad how it looks like. But now we can also think what about uh, I maybe want to uh, go a little bit higher on the second stair uh, up there and, and place my, my scan there and then merge the scans. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, put the scan a little bit higher up there and uh, we're gonna start a second scan and then we're gonna use the two of them as a single, uh, to merge them into a single one. Great. So you see that now my scanner is uh, up there. I don't know if you see it, but yeah, it's up there. And uh, I can go and start my second scan exactly as we did the first one, okay? And then they're gonna be merged inside the software, first in the field and then co-registered uh, out uh, in, uh, in, inside the office software. Great, so this is what happens uh, when you have the second scan. So now I, I uh, did both scans and you see that uh, scan two was basically placed exactly on top of scan one. So I can select it and bring it a little bit, a little bit farther, further away from, from scan, scan two from scan one. So uh, this is the situation we have right now and we have uh, somehow we need to align these two scans gonna show you how to do in a second but first I wanted to show you uh, one thing it can happen during the um, uh, the scanning that you maybe lose uh, uh, connection with the scanner and then you don't see this scan to appearing uh, there's no problem because if you uh, so if in that case you would not see scan 2 right here so there would be only scan 1 but if you go here in uh, um, in the first red button on the left, you see that you have scanner control and scanner data here. Scanner control and scanner data. In case one scan doesn't, doesn't appear, you just select it and then press uh, on the upper right and it will be downloaded from the scanner. In fact, everything is always, always, always 
um, saved on the scanner, never on the on the iPad. So this is this is a good thing to know. Everything that gets saved uh, gets saved on the scanner, and then the iPad downloads a copy of it. So the thing we have to do now is to make sure that the scan one and the scan two are linked. So I'm gonna press on the third red button uh, from uh, from the left and uh, it will ask me down here please select the first setup to link so i'm gonna select the scan one and then it's gonna ask me select the second one to link great um oh i actually forgot to do one thing sorry before doing that i with my fingers here i want to make sure that uh, i rotate and align these two scans as best as i can it doesn't have to be to be perfect but it has to be somehow accurate. For example, you see that down there, I have this wall uh, on the upper left corner. I'm sort of aligning a little bit the elements that I see here. So I am making sure that they are, they are sort of aligned. And then I press the button, the third button starting from the, the, the left. Oh, okay, select the first setup to link. This is the first one. Select the second setup and start alignment now basically uh, this is creating a link between the two scans it doesn't take very long because it's a very simple uh, link and the better you align your first two scans the better it will be uh, the better it will be later and now you also have the opportunity to realign again but as we align them the first time around it should be fine you see that uh, scan one and scan two are more or less coinciding again it doesn't have to be perfect uh, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be then down done uh, on the um, on the pc software but the better it is right now the less it's gonna it's gonna take when we do the software uh, we then uh, if we are sure about our alignment we click on optimize i can uh, can have a look if I can align something a bit better optimize and then create link now the two scans are linked so when we are uh, when we will be on the on the software it will know that these two scans are basically part of the same scene that you are trying to reconstruct good next step we put everything in the bag and we go in the office with all our data collected and safely stored on the iPad for which concerns the link, the link is stored on the iPad and on our scanner in case we want to do everything back from the first, uh, from the very first uh, step of optimization. We can also uh, take again the data from, for if um, uh, you don't do it correctly because maybe you are in a difficult uh, field uh, situation, uh, it's going to be okay to do it afterwards when you're quietly in the office uh, and uh, everything is better. Good. Okay, once we are in the office, we need to make sure that uh, our tablet is connected to the same Wi-Fi as the computer we're going to use. And we go to, uh, again, the Cyclone Field app and uh, we select again Tutorial and uh, we make sure that we have everything, uh, everything that we need and the two bundles are linked. Leaving the job, we go up here and uh, on, this, on this little eye up here and press uh, sync server. At this point, we need to connect uh, with the Cyclone register 360 on the PC. Okay, uh, now we are on the PC. I open the Cyclone Register 360 software. I go here in Field 360 and I make sure that uh, uh, the computer and the tablet are connected to the same Wi-Fi. And then I make sure that the IP address I have up here is the same that I see on the tablet. In this case, it's not the same. On the tablet, I have 192, 168, 2, 175 and the port is 8080 that's correct so i test connect them and uh, it's successfully connected so i go here add to project it will load every setup that is saved on the ipad and then i'm gonna um, i'm going to select 
uh, the ones that I want to import in this specific tutorial project. So you see that here, now that the uh, processing is finished, it took about 10 minutes. Uh, I have different uh, setups or different projects. Uh, these are other all the projects that I have on my iPad. So what we want is the tutorial project that is the one we acquired. Uh, so I select tutorial. Uh, we do not we do not have targets in our um, uh, in our scene, so I just take off uh, black and white targets, and of course we want to import uh, images. So we go here and press uh, importing. Again, it's going to take a little bit. Uh, never disconnect your iPad from the Wi-Fi and never um, leave the app on your iPad. So everything has to stay. Um, still okay uh it took about uh, half an hour um probably 40 minutes to import uh, everything and uh, you see here the the results of of the import so it says that successfully imported um uh, given the scanner data sources to setups which is the two um locations where we put our um uh where we put our um, scanner. So I okay. Uh, so at this stage, uh, what uh, I can start to do, I'm still into the review and optimize step. Uh, first of all, I can have a look that uh, all the errors here are, or all the, the setup are set to green. If you have targets uh, in your scene, this is the moment where you can insert targets uh, and uh, uh, you can georeference or reference your cloud point and cross-reference your cloud points. Uh, I just want to show you that uh, these three uh, buttons that are down here, so whenever you navigate to sitemap, which is the default view, um, you can have a look at the bundle cloud. So this is basically a way to navigate around your cloud, which is basically uh, showing you the 3D of, of your cloud. So this is, uh, this is a very nice, uh, a nice way to start visualizing that everything is uh, how you want it, and nothing is uh, is out of place. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, uh, look at the true slicer. So this will basically color the different cloud points uh, in different colors, so you can actually compare them. Uh, for example, if you zoom here, you see that the walls are actually, uh, the blue and green clouds are actually overlapping. And you can also, uh, go around the true slicers so for example um, adjust the, the slice location and the thickness so here we are we are really slicing our cloud point and we actually see that uh, the green and uh, the the blue so the our the green and the blue uh, point cloud points so our two cloud points are actually really well aligned so you see you can see that the walls are really really well aligned so this is basically to uh, to give another uh, other cross check, uh, other cross check for the um, uh, for the the cloud points. Okay. Once you're happy with this, uh, we can yeah go back to cloud map. We optimize the bundle. So now it's optimized. Uh, of course, in this uh, in this uh, um, in this part, you can also adjust the cloud points again uh, uh, by using uh, by using the toolbar up here uh, we're not going to go into that but uh, if you realize that they're not aligned perfectly uh, then you can you can really start having a look at how to align them better um, then we go to finalize which is our next uh, step uh, the finalization uh, is just uh, uh, is just basically to um, yeah uh, finish off the uh, the project what you what you have to do is uh, um, uh, let's say accept uh, this this uh, uh, this image so here you basically uh, you basically uh, set a nice image that you want uh, that you want to have in uh, in your reports afterwards you click on accept and then you click on accept right 
So up here, you see that uh, um, uh, the register software is creating, uh, now we are again in the last step, the report. It's uh, creating uh, a, a report. So a report with everything uh, you have uh, as a bundle error and the different setups and uh, uh, everything uh, everything you uh, you did in your uh, in your project so once you are uh, once you're happy with it we actually you can actually change you can actually change uh, things here you can uh, um, add your own logo to this um, uh, to this report if you want uh, if you're a student you can put your uh, name up here and uh, maybe a report heading tutorial DLK 360 when you do that you update your report and you see that it appears it appears here so uh, this is all uh, for for the reporting you have different um, um, you have different options here uh, and it's very um, important that you go here on the publish options and this is where you select how to uh, export for further um, review your uh, cloud point and uh, the products that you produced so for sure i'm gonna ask uh, i'm gonna make a um, lgs file which is a leica file i'm gonna show you a little bit how to how to use it how we can uh, we can play with this uh, another one uh, i often like to do is uh, the e57 file uh, the e57 file is basically a a uh, file that is um, uh, an open format, so it can be opened in any program of your choice. Uh, so, and I'm gonna do it as, as one file. If you, for some reason, you want to realign the cloud points, you can, uh, you can um, make a separate files, so one for each setup, and then you will be able to use the different cloud points in different, uh, um, uh, in different uh, uh, programs. Uh, decimate cloud points, uh, I often, unless I have a lot of uh, um, points, uh, I try not to uh, subsample, uh, subsample the, the, the images because I, I would really, I really like to, to keep everything. So uh, once you're ready uh, with all of this, uh, um, another thing uh, we could do is the true view. I'm gonna show you how to how to through view through view is a type of format which is uh, um, exploited by Leica to uh, make it readily accessible. I'm going to show you how we can uh, uh, we can uh, open this true view file with a free software provided by Leica. So once I do this, I just go to publish. Uh, yeah, I had already saved the tutorial one, but uh, I'm going to create a new one tutorial i'm gonna rename it as tutorial okay now it's publishing uh it's saving everything i'm gonna be back when this is all done to conclude a little bit uh, the overview of how we do a survey with blk 360 and how we process the data on our laptop i want to show you two softwares and give you some hints on how we work with these two softwares. I'm not gonna go in the details because they are very large and very complicated, but so you have an idea of what you can do after you export data from uh, the 3D register, the Cyclone 3D register uh, workflow that I just showed you. So the first software I wanna show is Cloud Compare. It's an open access software, is well-maintained, uh, and it's very nice to work with 3D data. So I can open E57 data with uh, uh, Cloud Compare. Uh, this is the data we saved uh, in the last step uh, of the Cyclone register processing. Now it's gonna uh, load our cloud points. It takes a little bit because we are on my laptop, but this is what, uh, this is what we have. And we can uh, go down here and put RGB in the colors, and you will see that your uh, your cloud point reappears uh, nicely here. Uh, you also have a file structure here, and there's lots of um, uh, information and metadata about your um, 
about your uh, your work. So this is the best way to have uh, to quickly visualize the cloud point, uh, and you can also export uh, in a series of other formats. Also, go and if you want to put this online, uh, but you can also uh, do some uh, operations such as creating a mesh, which is um, uh, what what we need then to actually export objects if we want uh, to get objects, gather objects. Online, so uh, this is uh, uh, the the cloud compare. Just very quickly, um, it's a it's a well documented software, so uh, you can uh, really dig into it and try to um, try to find out uh, as much as information uh, you want on um, on cloud compare. The second workflow I want to show you is the Cyclone 3DR. This is uh, instead a proprietary software from Leica, and uh, it's included in the academic list license that we have at the University of Bremen, so I'm going to show it to you. Uh, we It works better with LGS files. If you remember, we saved one at the last step, so this is the LGS file. Instead of just importing it, I also convert it. Um, and I raise the maximum number of points because I want to import all the points here. And I want to import also the images from uh, my scene. So I'm going to import that. And uh, after a bit, it will, uh, uh, the, the project will appear here. Okay, now that the now that the uh, cloud points have been imported, you can see again, as we were looking in, uh, in Cloud Compare, our cloud is here, so we can see it. And um, uh, what we can do are uh, a couple of things. First of all, we can actually select part of this cloud. If we go into, uh, sorry, clean, clean and separate, uh, we can actually uh, select, let's say a part of this cloud. So. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to keep only this one. So you see that now I'm keeping only a small portions of, of the cloud. This, oh, okay. Uh, this actually uh, helps me when I want to, um, to simplify. Okay, I'm going to keep only this, this little part of the house. And this helps me actually if I want to simplify uh, the next steps. So if I want to shorten the next steps, because uh, uh, what we can do now is create an object from what we see here. Uh, and we can do that by... Okay, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna keep this one on. I'm gonna do by selecting uh, the cloud that we just, uh, uh, that we just clipped and going into the 3D mesh. So we can mesh in two steps. Uh, usually this number should be uh, brought down if we want a very precise mesh, but for now let's let's keep the, um, uh, the parameters that we have in the software. So it's gonna be farther, faster. And now you see that instead of a, a series of points, you have an object. So this is the object of the house that we have here. Um, and then as this is the, the two-step uh, mesh creation, we're going to ask the program to refine the mesh. It's going to take a few seconds. Um, again, the larger the project it is, the smaller the mesh it is, uh, the, more, the, the higher the time of calculation will be. OK, now this is done. The mesh has been refined. You see that for the places where we have enough point, it's actually uh, fairly accurate. It's not very accurate up here, for example, um, on the roof because we don't see many points. So we should have taken maybe another scan higher if we wanted to have the details of the roof. But you see that the face of the house is um, very nicely done. Another thing that we can do is actually um, put on top of this uh, newly built mesh um, a texture. So. To do that, I'm just going to have to select the mesh and select all the images that I have down here and select the mesh. And I go in texturing and I go texturing from images. Um, here I, um, I texture, I put the photos, I splay the photos only on uh, uh, if there is a, a fully visible vertex. So we're going we're gonna to do this. And here is our, 
our photos displayed onto the, uh, the house that we were looking at before. So you see that uh, down here it's not very well defined because there are not enough points. So if we wanted it to be better defined, probably we should have put a station down here. And this shows you also the importance of planning in advance, whatever you want to do uh, according to what you're interested in. But uh, this was a very quick and dirty um, show up of what we can do and once you have an object like this one you can export it on website you can analyze it the distances are kept as, as real world distances uh, down this program inside this program there's also the possibility to actually make cameras and make short movies uh, and export in many different formats that can also go online uh, i'm not going to go too much into the details because there are several tutorials online for this but i just wanted to show you what's possible with uh, the BLK360 and the software that is provided by Lycan.